Specificity is something that too many people don't really understand. In this video, I'm not just going to look at what it is, but I'm going to look at what some of the best practices are as well so we can make sure we don't run into issues with it. Now the basics of it is, your selectors can be more or less specific, and the more specific you are, the more important a rule is, and this is, well, important when you're trying to overwrite things. So to understand specificity properly, we also need to make sure we understand the cascade. And uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to jump over to here and we can see that my body has a color of white on it. So all of my text is white. And if I come down here and I write body and I switch this, so I do color to blue, all of my text is going to change over to blue. And then if I switch this body color pink, all of my text is going to switch over to pink. So it's always the last rule that wins. So right now I'm not being any more or less specific. It's just going, okay, here's my body, my color's white. Oh no, here's my body, my color's blue. Oh no, here's my body and my color's pink. So because all of those have equal specificity, the none of them are really, it's just the last one that wins. There's no other importance to them, so the last one wins. Um, so you might sometimes also hear that um, there's an order of importance between an external style sheet, an internal style sheet, and inline style. And that's sort of true, and it sort of follows with the cascade a little bit. So here I have uh, all of this, and you can see my body actually has a background on here. Whoops, my body's background's down here because I was going to use this for something else. Um, so we're going to just focus on that. So here's a greenish color on my body. And if I come over onto here, I also have an internal CSS style uh, in the tag here, and that one has this yellowish background on it. But the one that's currently winning is this inline style. I'm going to talk a little bit more about inline styles later on. But if I take this inline style off and I save, my internal CSS is winning. But this isn't because the internal CSS is more important. This is falling down to the cascade. It's a little bit different when I had my uh, inline style over here. But for internal CSS like this, if I just take my external file and I move it below this and save, you can see that now this one is winning because it's reading this rule, then it's reading this rule. And you could sort of say, well, then when it's an inline style, it's just going in order. It's reading this one, then it's reading this one. And then if there's an inline style, it's reading that one. That's the last one. And that one wins. But it gets a little bit more complicated than that because right now we're just dealing with things being all the same value. Let's get our red background because it's a bit easier to see everything. It's a bit bright, but that's okay. Um, so if we come back over to here and right now I'm using my body and other things. So I could also do a P and we could say color is green and my paragraphs will change to green. So here both my body and my paragraph these are just tag selectors, so I'm selecting all my paragraph tags or my body tag. This is the lowest level of specificity you can get. Now I could also overwrite this green style by writing in div p and saying color is yellow. And then that nice yellow color comes in right there. Um, so this is looking for all of my paragraphs inside a div. And you'd probably never actually write something like this, but it's still there. And if we come and look, it's I'm just, just to show you, we have our paragraphs that are inside a div. Now the difference here is if I take my color green and I actually put that down underneath. So first I have this one and then second I have this one. When I save this file and it updates, it's not actually changing over here. And I'll just show you, I'll refresh just to make sure. And it's still yellow. So this green one is getting ignored. And it's because this is being more specific than this. This is a paragraph inside a div. So this is more specific than just looking at all of the paragraphs on my site. So because of that, this rule, no matter where it is, is always going to win over this rule. Now, you'd probably never actually write div space p, right? That just seems a little strange. Um, you'd probably target something if you really wanted something specific by uh, using a class. So if we get rid of, and in this case, I have a class of definition and a class of source. So let's go and grab my definition over here. And we're just going to do it up here. And I'm going to put dot definition. And we're going to say that the color on this, let's make it a little easier on the eyes, is black. Not blank. Black. 
And even though this is coming before this one and before that one, this one is winning now. And the reason this one is winning is classes are considered more specific than tags. Now to help you understand uh, what's actually going on here, let's open up a calculator that shows us what we can do. So the link to this is in the description below if you want to come and play with this. And you can see here it's this little calculator. So um, if you have things that are competing against each other and you want to know what's going to win, you can use this to help you figure it out. Um, and this is a really nice visualization. So you can see here elements, which is just our div and our p, these tags like that. Um, these are elements and also pseudo elements. They're worth sort of one point. We're going to see why it's not exactly one point, but it's worth this level of um, points. And then a class is worth in this area here. So if I do here my dot definition, and over here I do my div space p, I can see that this is only worth two, and this is sort of worth 10. So this is obviously going to win out over this one which is why, so this is being more specific, so it's overwriting it, so that's why this is black, even though it's coming before all of this other stuff. Just to be, just so you really understand what's actually happening here, this actually isn't two points and 10 points, it's a little bit different than that. So just to, to help show you this, um, I'm gonna take a look at example now of something that I never want you to ever find yourself in. So this is the situation that I never want you to find yourself in, and I don't think you ever will be. But let's just go take a look at um, how this would work. So here I have my selector for my 15 divs. And so let's go and change this. We'll say uh, the color here is going to be pink. And you'd think this would be worth 15 points because it is 15 t uh, element selectors. And that would be sort of right. But here if I do a color of blue, this still wins. So what's going on exactly? Well, what's happening is um, these points always just add up in this column. So you could have a hundred divs, a thousand divs, it doesn't really matter. One class attribute is going to overwrite whatever crazy selector you've just come up with. Now this is super bad practice and I hope you're never doing stuff like that. Um, but it's just to say a lot of people see this as like w one to nine and then all of a sudden this is 10 points. It's not exactly true, even though for the most part you can't see it like that because it should never happen that any of these get past uh, a couple of, of uh, values. You know, you don't want something that's overly nested or selected in an overly nested way. Um, now, as you can see here on the calculator, IDs are worth more than classes and that makes more sense because IDs are more specific than a class. But in general, we want to avoid IDs. They're adding an extra layer of specificity to our documents that we don't really want to have to fight with. Because as soon as um, I do something on this ID, I can't overwrite it with a class. Um, or a, a, I can't overwrite it pretty much without doing anything. Um, and that, it can be really annoying with stuff like that. So just, um, I think you get the idea of what's going on. But here, if I have my dot source, color is green and then my ID of source color is yellow um, it's it's gonna get the yellow color on there and while this isn't a, a super realistic example you might have something that has an ID on it and a different class and you're using that class in 10 different places and the ID is overwriting it and doing something you don't really want it to do um, one way you could overwrite it is you could use an inline style. So I said we would get back to inline styles. So style equals color black. We'll go back to black. Um, and this will overwrite it. So that is here we can see inline styles are the king. In, inline styles just overwrite everything. If you put something inline it wins out. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, or almost nothing I should say. But um, we want to avoid inline styles like the plague because you're never going to find them. You're not going to remember something is there. They're a nightmare. The only time they come into play is when you're using JavaScript, really. And even then, it's often better to simply add or remove classes with JavaScript instead of styling the actual thing with JavaScript if you can. Um, one way you can overwrite anything pretty much is with the important. So if I come on my paragraph here and I say this green is important, Oh my good look, they all changed. Even the one that had the inline style on it here down at the bottom. Well, how did that happen? 
the important pretty much means this is more important than everything else. So no matter what happens, it needs to override everything. But don't use this, please. Because what happens when you do this, it's the same problem that you probably ran into when you had your ID. You're using an important now because you want to overwrite something. Now, it probably isn't on a paragraph thing like this, but I see it a lot where you might have a class of like green, and you want to make sure that the color on this is used and you need to overwrite stuff because you have selectors that are just more complicated and adding this isn't working. So you go and you do something like that and you add the important. But then you get to your source and you really want the source to be yellow, but there's something that's important that's getting in the way. Well, you can still overwrite it because once you put important on something, I can come down here and add important. And now your whole specificity war starts over again. So you have your paragraph, important, is being overridden by my source, which is important. And the important just causes problems. If, if you're having to use important, it means see if you can think of a better way to write your code. There are times when maybe it can be used and there's always an exception to every rule, but well, you, you, if you're using important, you better have an amazing reason for using it. Because for the most part, you shouldn't have to use it. It's something that should not be needed because you should be writing nice, simple CSS. And the simple way to stop from running into issues with specificity, don't use paragraphs, uh, don't use element selectors if you don't have to. Now, paragraph is one I use because you have lots of paragraphs on your site. But for the most part, use classes as much as possible. Be really generous with your use of classes. So I really, really would have something like this. Um, if I wanted these two to be styled differently, I would definitely have a class of definition and a class of source on these two paragraphs so I could style them separately like this. And then I can control these paragraphs exactly how I want. I would probably have a class of title on this if it's the title of my page so I can select it with a class. By doing that, you're keeping the level of specificity the same across the board. You don't have to use um, nested selectors. So if I wasn't using classes on things, often you'd end up having a div class and you'd want to select something inside of there. So you'd have your div, which you know you can't just go div. So in that case, you would actually have a class. So say you have like a section one, and in there you might have an h2, so you have to select it like this because you're not using a class and you want to make a special change to that. I could have my section 1 and have all my styling for that. And then I could have my section 1 title. And then this title is something that I'm styling separately if that really needs its own styling for it. Um, this might not be the best. Maybe I could just have it as a section title and all of my section titles get the same styling and that's something that I could reuse in lots of different places. So in general, as a general rule of thumb, try to stick to classes only. Try to avoid nesting your selectors as much as possible just to keep everything on an even playing field and it's going to stop any problems you might run into when you're dealing with specificity.